from different verticals. Um, a new record of 1.2 million vehicles sold in uh, in a quarter, uh, in quarter three. So, uh, uh, I, but uh, you know, uh, like was the case 31st of March uh, last year. You know, we will again end up at uh, close to 20,000 crores of cash uh, this year, and you know, I don't think uh, uh, it's it's smart to sit on all that money. Um, so one could give it away uh, plain gen, as plain gen dividend, or one can uh, do it a little more uh, efficiently, let's say, uh, through a buyback. So uh, I think it's uh, it's a no-brainer. Okay, well, uh, that's great to hear, and your shareholders are rejoicing. The stock has now moved to the highest point of trade, up 2.5%. Uh, Rajiv, I know you don't want to talk about the size, the quantum, etc., but we understand that it could be much higher than what you did the last time around. Is it fair to assume that? Yeah, I'm uh, uh, really having to hold myself back from talking about it because I'm not supposed to talk about it uh, mm -hmm. till, till the board actually uh, meets to decide on that. But uh, yes, I can say that uh, it would be logical that since this year is turning out to be much better than the previous and even better than what we expect, expected at the start of the year, uh, so certainly that would point towards a more significant buyback uh, than we did the last time. Uh, but again, uh, you know, that's something the board has to decide on Monday. Okay. You're also sitting on a huge cash pile, as you said, and there are different ways to sort of give back, right? One of them, of course, is the buyback route. But anything else? I mean, what is the plan that you have with the cash on your books, say, over the medium term? Well, as my father would uh, uh, always say, he was very happy to keep the cash under his pillow every night. He said he, very, he slept very well uh, on that basis. Uh, but no, more seriously, we are obviously investing strongly uh, in the business. If I may elaborate, you know, you've seen the entire Pulsar lineup being refreshed and the impact in the marketplace. Rakesh spoke with you all day before to say that in all probability we have uh, rested the number one position in the 125 CC plus segment. Um, uh, so other than the 100cc motorcycle segment, as far as domestic sales are concerned, uh, and I think he's still awaiting uh, the last bit of industry information on that, but we are in number one position there in all probability. Uh, you know, we've invested in a new plant for KTM in Chakhan, which is on stream now, so we needed to um, invest in that. The Chetak has moved up very smartly to uh, clearly over 10,000 vehicles a month, so there's a lot of investment in that, in, in technology and in facilities. The electric three-wheeler we launched in May last year, uh, we are close to, I think, uh, leadership uh, uh, in the next, uh, uh, or in this quarter, uh, as far as e-autos are concerned. And while the export business is still flattish, around 140,000 a month, um, but, you know, we are investing in markets, most importantly, Brazil. And, uh, you know, so we are doing what we need to do for the business. Um, uh, but, but yes, it's a very profitable business, a 20% EBITDA, as you have seen in Q1, Q2. Uh, the exchange rate is very favorable. So that explains the, the excess cash. Mm. Okay, it's a great position to be in, I guess. Uh, enviable position, Rajiv. Uh, hi, good afternoon. Surabhi here. Season's greetings to you. Wish you a happy new year. So you mentioned, I mean, it's only the tax bit, right? The tax efficiency, because if you give out dividends and they're taxable at the slab rate in the hands of uh, shareholders, uh, and the buyback perhaps is a little more efficient. Is that the only reason that you're lo looking at a buyback? Well, that's obviously a very, very important reason. And uh, for whatever salutary effect that may have in terms of earnings per share, etc., obviously no single buyback like the individual rung of a ladder gets you anywhere. But, you know, if you do it progressively, um, over five, ten years, um, uh, then, you know, you find yourself in a different position uh, at, at the end of that process. So I think, uh, uh, or rather, uh, I would like to believe that the board would uh, conclude that uh, doing this uh, is, is better, more efficient in the short term and in the long term than just a plain gen dividend. You know? mm. Your shareholders are absolutely loving every bit of what you're saying, Rajiv. The stock is surging as we speak. No, it? it absolutely is. Yes, yes. Uh, I think 3-3.5% three, three right now since we started this chat. Uh, 20,000 crores of cash. I know you can't talk about how much you plan to give back to shareholders right now. We'll have those details only after the board meeting is over. But just when you look at the business and you're looking at the investments also uh, that you would be making over the next one to two years, 
Uh, give us some sense on on the utilization. How much will go in you know in the business organically? Would you look at more inorganic and also a sense of uh, the blended capacity utilization level across the plants that uh, you'd be operating at now? Okay, so let me go in reverse order there. I think our capacity is around uh, 500 to 550,000 vehicles a month. Uh, the reason I say uh, approximately is because it depends on the mix, uh, the blend. Um, I would like to believe that, uh, you know, I just said that we had a record quarter of 1.2 million vehicles sold in Q3. Uh, of course, uh, that's the peak quarter because of the festive season. But I would like to believe from what I know of, you know, uh, our product plans and sales and marketing uh, plans for this quarter, that we can repeat the festive quarter in Q4 as well. So I'd like to think that uh, sales every month will, uh, will start with a four. Um, and and I can tell you the breakup roughly. Uh, I'm hopeful that the domestic motorcycle business between Bajaj, KTM, and Triumph should be close to 200,000 motorcycles, uh, driven primarily by uh, by the Pulsar. You know, I heard you say earlier that the market rally has pressed the pause button, but remember there is no pause button on a Pulsar. So Pulsar will keep going. <laughs> we have many launches. We have many launches planned for for this quarter under that brand. I'm hopeful that Chetak will cross over into 15,000 territory uh, per month in this quarter. I'm hopeful we will maintain the momentum on our domestic three-wheeler sales at around 40,000 a month. And uh, I think exports will still remain stable uh, uh, at about 140,000 plus minus a month. So I think all of that would add up to about 400,000 a month uh, January may be a little weaker, March may be a little stronger as we head into the marriage season. Um, uh, so that is what, that's one. Uh, and, and to just respond to your previous questions, it is best that I share with you what we have done in the past. One, typically our capex every year is only about a thousand crores. Uh, when our PAT is now looking like it's going to be, you know, more in the region of seven, eight thousand crores. So obviously uh, we are generating far more than we need to uh, to invest. And uh, finally, our dividend policy, which is a public document, clearly states that uh, whenever we have uh, in excess of 15,000 crores sitting on our books, we would like to give away um, anything more than 70% uh, of that through a combination of uh, dividend buyback, etc. Um, and last year we did give away, I think we gave away more than 100%. Uh, so I think we're going to just simply stay true to the dividend policy. Okay, this is actually the most optimistic I've heard you in a while, Rajiv. So, uh, I don't know why you have talked to me in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't spoken to you, but I've heard you, right, in the recent interviews. So, this is the most optimistic. And I don't know why you're complaining that 2023 was good, so you don't want to move into 2024. 2024 could just be better, better. Uh, than the previous year. You know, and this is a big change, Sonia, from what we heard, Rajiv, uh, you know, and Mr. Sharma, when they joined in, very cautious. Suddenly, you know, it appears they're revving up the engine a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> they are. They are for sure. But, okay, can you leave us with one more uh, data point on the market share, especially in the 125cc plus segment? Because you know, the, the market is growing there, your own share is picking up and 70% of your business comes from there. So what's the latest? So uh, the reason Rakesh didn't share that is because we still don't know the data of one major competitor. But from what we know, and then we've hazarded a guess about uh, that one uh, uh, company, uh, our estimate is that our 125cc uh, segment market share has moved up very sharply uh, to th about 32%. Uh, in the Pulsar segment, which is the 150-250, uh, we're probably closer to 42%. And in the 125cc plus, where we believe that we may now be in a leadership position in the domestic market, we would probably be about 35%. Now, that may be 34 or 36, depending on what we get exactly by the end of the day or tomorrow morning. Okay, all right, uh, Rajiv. Thanks so much for joining. And Rajiv, you know, before you go, I want to tell you that I've been riding the Triumph. You know, we, uh, uh, as a family, we buy a lot of bikes, and uh, we bought two Triumphs in our family, in my family building that we uh, stay in. And I ride it almost every second day. It's very, very good. Take care of your shareholders. But if you can come up with some bigger bikes as well, na, even the customers will be very, very happy. So shareholders will be happy with this dividend payout buyback. Come up with some bigger bikes with the kind of cash balance you'll have. We'll be very, very happy. But uh, congrats. And uh, we look forward to further details Thank on this buyback as well. You, Nigel. Thank you, Thank you for that homework. And uh, pass on my commiserations to Anuj for his Harley Davidson.
<laughs> Maybe all three of you can go for a ride together sometime, you know. <laughs> Why not? I'll, I'll take them for a ride, don't worry. <laughs> okay. All right. Just don't take your shareholders for a ride, Rajiv. We are already on the ride. Right. Look at that stock. The shareholders are loving this ride. When we started the conversation, I think the stock was just one percent up or thereabouts. Yeah. As uh, we say bye to Rajiv, the stock is soaring five percent up. Uh, what a move on Bajaj Auto in anticipation of that buyback. Twenty thousand crore rupees in the bank uh, on the books, and Rajiv saying that. Uh, you know, the board will come up with the specifics on uh, Monday. And I think, you know, through the course of the interview, the, just the fact that the sentiment was so positive, oh, yes. he was very optimistic yes. about yes. demand trends, very optimistic about, he also said that the 35% market share in the 125 CC plus segment, they are market leaders mm -hmm. in that segment, which is picking up a lot. I think all of that is working very well. So, of course, there's a buyback on one hand, but the growth in the business and the, yeah. you know, body language yeah. of the management. You know, when, when a manufacturing company tells you they need to invest only about 1,000 crores every year, they're mm -hmm. getting 7,000 crores in profit in that same year. Yeah. It's just saying so much about the, you know, just the nature of that business, mm. the quality of that business. Well, let's get back to the markets though, guys. Uh, you mm. know, when we're having that chat with uh, Rajiv, if you just pull up, uh, you pull up the Nifty and you pull up what the, uh, what Bajaj Auto Stock has done. Nifty moved to the low point of the day. We were down close to 130, 135 points. Bajaj Auto though is up close to around 5%. So both of them doing a thing of their own as we speak. The Nifty Bank though, that's still down 30 points. We have 30 minutes to go before this expiry. So let's see whether or not the Nifty Bank has a trick up its sleeve. For the time being, slip into a short break, come back. We'll get chatting with Saurav Mukherjee, founder of Marcellus Investment Managers. You stay with us.